Minasan Konnichiwa. So prior to the accident, uh, Fukushima Prefecture was a major supplier of uh, logs to the shiitake industry. But since the accident, it is not permitted to distribute uh, general foods like shiitake that contain more than 100 bakuro per kilogram of radio cesium. Therefore, it's not recommended to use logs from contaminated forests to cultivate shiitake. So, radio cesium is not at equilibrium in the environment, which means that um, we expect that the radio cesium in wood will increase in the future. So, for example, in 2012, radio cesium in wood ranged from 6 to 47 bacro per kilogram. But in a modeling study, it's been predicted that radio cesium in wood will contain 120 bacro per kilogram in the future. And the reason for this is that at the time of the accident, uh, radio cesium fell on the outer part of trees, mainly the bark. And over time, this radio cesium will gradually move into the wood. And also, radio cesium fell on the forest floor. And gradually, via the roots of trees, this will move into the trees and into the wood. はい、こう、あの、補足させていただきます。はい。あ、ここでは、えっと、イクリビリムって言ってましたけども、ま、こういった生成シームがまだ、え、森林の中で平行状態を出してないという話をされてまして、2012年はま、こういうようなモードの材
Uh, this whole process takes about two and a half hours per log. So therefore, it's not very time or labor efficient. Um, it, it's also, there is many steps involved, so there is a chance of cross-contamination between logs. And it's not very applicable, this method is not very applicable if you have a large sample size. So for example, if you want to know uh, what is the average stable season concentration in eastern Japan, and let's say there's a million logs. Um, so I have calculated using the equation in this paper that we would need to sample about 380 logs. So it would just take too much time, cost too much. But this is a good method in regards to, it does provide a representative sample of the log, which is good. So I want to simplify the method. So in this simpl simplified method, again, we cut the log eight times, but this time we only collect the sawdust. And then the sawdust is milled to a fine powder, and it is this sample that's sent to the lab for stable season analysis. And from the outset, I think it's evident that this method should be more time and labor efficient. Uh, also, there's less steps involved, so there should be less contamination, cross-contamination. And it is more suitable if you have a large number of logs to sample. What we do not know is that the, whether the concentration of stable season in the sawdust is representative of stable season in the entire log. Okay, that's what we don't know, and that's what I want to talk about today. Okay, first I just want to um, explain my transfer factor. So the transfer factor is a measure of how easy it is for fungi to take radio season out of a log and transfer it into the fruiting body. And it's calculated by you quantifying how much radio season is in the fruiting body and divided by how much radiocesium is in the log in which the fruiting body is growing. And this value was calculated a few years ago, and it is, it is 2. And with this equation, then, it's easy to... For example, we can use this equation to tell us what's the maximum amount of radiocesium in a log that can produce shiitake that does not contain more than 100 barcodes per kilogram of radiocesium. And this value at, at present is 50 bacterial per kilogram. So logs should not be used if they contain more than 50 bacterial per kilogram of radiocesium. This is a provisional value. It's a provisional value because the two was only calculated, was calculated soon after the accident when most of the radiocesium was in the bark, not in the wood. But shiitake takes its nutrients from the wood, not from the bark. And if a tree is contaminated with radiocesium, it's also going to take the radiocesium from the wood if it's present and not from the bark. すみません、こちらもちょっと複雑なので、えっと、お得させていただきます。と、ここでは、あ、いわゆる移行係数の話をしておりまして、ま、椎茸の場合の移行係数というのは、原木椎茸を植わっている木の濃度に対する椎茸
sapwood and hardwood contain the same amount of stable cesium? And how many shiitake and sawdust samples should we collect from a log? This is the method I used. So the first thing I did was I marked 10 centimeter intervals along the length of the log, and we collected the fruiting bodies at each 10 centimeter section. And then we cut the log, and each time we cut the log, we also collected the saw the sample. Okay, each saw the sample was collected separately. And with the discs, then we uh, separated them into bark, sapwood, and hardwood components. And then all the samples were crushed and milled, or, or just milled. And these samples were analyzed for stable cesium concentration. So just to recap, um, we collected nine Chitake uh, fruiting body samples from each log. We collected eight uh, sawdust samples from each log, then nine bark, nine sapwood, and nine hardwood samples from each log. And these are the results. So this shows the transfer factor of stable cesium based on sawdust, sapwood, and hardwood. And these values were calculated using these equations. And there was no significant difference between the transfer factor based on sawdust, sapwood, and hardwood. Also, these values were calculated based on dry weight of shiitake and wood. Uh, if we do these calculations again using fresh weight of shiitake and wood, um, then the value is 4, transfer factor equals to 4. You might also notice that there is the transfer factor for stable season using sawdust was slightly lower than for wood. And I'm going to explain the reason for that in the next slide. So here I am showing the average stable cesium concentration in bark, sapwood, and hardwood. And as you can see, there was a higher amount of stable cesium in the bark compared to the wood. And sawdust contains bark, sapwood, and hardwood. So if we go back, so this value will be a little bit higher. And if this value stays the same, then this value will be slightly lower. Transfer factor will be slightly lower, as we can see. Okay, this next graph shows the average amount of stable cesium in sawdust along the length of the log. And there was no significant difference in sawdust, sorry, in stable cesium concentrations in sawdust along the length of the log. So what that means is that we can just cut the log once and use that one sawdust sample to represent the log. However, there is some natural variation in stable cesium along the length of the log. And it is very easy to take multiple sawdust samples from a log. So we recommend cutting the log eight times, collecting eight sawdust samples, and mixing these sawdust, sawdust samples together, together to provide one sawdust sample per log. Similarly, this graph shows stable cesium concentration in fruiting bodies along the length of the log. And again, there was no significant difference in stable cesium concentration in fruiting bodies along the length of the log, which means we can just take fruiting bodies, say, from one 10 centimeter section to represent all the fruiting bodies on the log. Um, however, there is some natural variation in stable cesium in, in the shiitake along the length of the log. So we recommend taking 12 fruit, uh, shiitake per log with at least at least one shiitake for each 10 centimeter section. Uh, here I'd just like to summarize then the, the new sawdust method. So collect 12 fruiting bodies and collect eight sawdust samples and then mix the fruiting bodies, mix the sawdust samples together and then analyze the fruiting bodies and the sawdust for stable cesium in triplicate. Step two, three, and four takes about 10 minutes. And this is in contrast to two and a half hours using the previous method. So this just compares the two methods, the old method and the new method using sawdust. And again, the new method is much quicker to collect 
examples. Um, we also did a kind of separate analysis. I wanted to know where does, what is the source of variation in stable cesium, okay? Between, between logs, is it between logs or is it within logs? And we found most of the variation is between logs. And you should always um, focus your sampling efforts where the most variation exists. And in practical terms, that means we need to be collecting more logs. And this method, the new sawdust method, can do that for us. May I? May I? Yeah, please go. えっ、ー、と、ここもちょっと複雑なのでお話しさせていただきますと、まあ、マーティー先生の方法で、まあ、ソーダスト、すなわち、小学校、小学部で、簡易的に、えっ、ー、と、木の濃度を測れるよという話でございますが、まあ、その際に、えっ、ー、と、どこの部分の小学部を切るかというので、8箇所試したところ、その8箇所の中のばらつき具合、まあ、横の方が高いとか、真ん中の方が高いとか、まあ、そういったばらつき具合に比べますと、もう木を超えたもの、こ,うこの、えっ、ーえー、と、こだぎだとか、このこだぎだとか、まあ、そちらのばらつきの方が、まあ、圧倒的に多いということなので、えっ、ー、と、えーか、あの、マーティ先生のやっている簡易的な方法で、えー、むしろこちらのばらつきを減らすような、たくさんのサンプルをやるということが、あの、将来的なセシウムの、えっ、ー、と、移行係数っていうのを調べるのに、えー、重要じゃないかというお話をされております。So finally, I'd just like to acknowledge my co-investigators on this study, and if you want to read more about this particular study,、um, it has been published in the journal here, Jay, so please download it if you want to read it. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.